All right, I had a question slash uh, request from a viewer. Um, in a previous video, I showed a circuit um, like this and a circuit like this. And I put this up to a VNA, okay? And so I had a 50 ohm resistor and I had a capacitor in series and I had an inductor in series. And um, I'll try to remember to put a link below for that video, but uh, what ends up happening is uh, you, oops, you, uh, have a 50 ohm resistor, so you start at 50 ohms, okay? So you have 50 ohm resistor here. And if you have an inductor, it's gonna follow this curve here, okay? It's gonna go in the, in the up direction, in the, uh, in the plus gamma direction. And if you have a capacitor, then it goes in, in this direction, okay? So this is a C and this is an L, okay? And uh, their question is, okay, that's great. But what if we have a situation where instead of things in series, uh, we have a uh, capacitor and the resistor are in, in, um, in parallel, okay? So um, better drawn, that may look more like this. You have a uh, you have a parallel uh, circuit, so we're going to have a. Um, what I've done is I've made one with a hundred ohm resistor this time, so we're going to have a hundred ohm resistor, and we'll have a, a capacitor, and so uh, we know we're going to start here at a hundred ohms this time, okay, and we have a capacitor, and so if it were in series, it would travel along it would travel along this line, okay. Um, but it's in parallel. So what happens when it's in parallel, okay? So let's go over to the uh, vector network analyzer and we'll hook it up and uh, see what this does, okay? Again, we're gonna have this circuit. It's 100 ohms and a variable um, capacitor to ground and we'll see what this does. All right, so uh, there we go. Uh, we are definitely starting at 100 ohms, like I said, and normally uh, we would, in a series uh, uh, situation, we would follow this curve here. We would follow the uh, uh, constant uh, resistance curve, and uh, we would add capacitance, and we would go in this direction. And uh, now we're going to be going in this direction. So does that make sense? Well. So remember I said that if you have something in series, the very best you can do is have an open. And so the higher and the higher values, you, you end up going over here to the open, which is the infinity over here. But when things go to ground, then things can short out and, and go to a short condition. And so everything's gonna travel here over to the short, which is zero ohms over here, okay? And so, um, it's instead of traveling on this curve, it's traveling on this curve, right? So let's go back over to the uh, over to the paper and uh, I'll, I'll show you what's going on. Now, one of the things I don't like about VNAs is they only have one set of curves. They only have this set of curves. But remember when I um, showed you many, many times the, the actual Smith chart or uh, the uh, little MATLAB program I put together and stuff. There's a set of red curves and there's a set of blue curves. So let's go back and look at that. All right. So the spectrum, I mean, the uh, vector network analyzer only has these red curves. It does not have the blue curves. Okay. And so what we saw is we saw starting here at 100 ohms and we're going to be traveling this direction. Now look, we get to travel on one of the blue curves now. This blue curve goes all the way all the way over here and ends up over at the short condition okay so that's the trajectory it was taking um, so 
uh, like I said, things in series would have been traveling on the red curve, but things in parallel would be traveling on the blue curve. And that's why it's so important to have both of these curves on there. Um, and, you know, they just want to do one, <laughs> I, I guess. I don't know. But it'd be nice to be able to toggle back and forth on the uh, on the VNA to be able to put in these two curves. Um, maybe toggle, toggle to the red ones or toggle to the blue ones uh, when you need those. But uh, we can see that, uh, yeah, theory and measurements are agreeing and, and we travel along this curve. Now, all of these things are very, very valuable because um, a, way, a lot of the times, the way that the spectrum analyzer is used, I mean, the, the, uh, not the, the spectrum, the VNA is used, is uh, you'll measure uh, something and you may measure complex impedance of, let's say, um, oh, let's just pick a point. Let's just pick a point here, okay? And you want it to be 50 ohms. So how do you get it to be 50 ohms? Well, there's a couple paths you can take. Um, first of all, you could travel along this line and then travel along this line. So we're using the red curve here and the red curve here, okay? Um, is there another way to do this? Yeah, well, we could travel, uh, we could travel a, uh, a blue curve, and then we could travel a red curve, and then we could travel a blue curve, and we get to the same point. So, um, there are different ways of doing things, right? And so you can make um, you can make circuits that look like this, or you can make circuits that look like this, or you can make a circuit that looks like this. You can put in lots of different things, right? You could put things in series, and you can put things in in parallel. And there are things called uh, uh, T, T networks, uh, pi networks, there's all these L, L pads, uh, there's, there's, there's different ways of doing things and it's, it's, it's traveling in different directions, right? So when you're putting things in, 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 uh, uh, parallel, you're traveling on the blue lines, you're putting things in series, you're traveling along the red lines. Anyway, I uh, hope that answers the question that was asked. Uh, when things are in parallel to ground, then you travel blue curves, and uh, yeah, you go in this direction instead of this direction.